Hope you're ready for Real Talk Monday. Here at MGA, it's, uh, it's, it's such a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to continue doing this in a setting where we're, we're keeping, uh, of course, ourselves in uh, our, our proper social distance and all of that. But um, I just had a split second moment in my mind now. Uh, I'm going to be doing a song here, but I wanted to have a real talk moment. A little bit of discussion so we can hear some different voices in the room. So, um, I had a, a thought driving home yesterday, I'm just out for a drive, and um, thinking to myself about the longevity of, the, of this whole process, you know, and how long this is going to go. And we're, we're always, you know, we're praying and believing that the Lord has a plan and purpose for everything, of course. And, my mind is just like thinking about, like, if the if the government, if the populace were to open up their doors, open up the the I think they call it the floodgates, and, and have the people go back to normalcy, when that process would actually happen. And thinking about, okay, if if that were to happen, say in the next few months, how long this whole the virus would stick. And my mind goes, well, in order for that to, in order for us to really get back into a, a, a process, you, you need to have some form of immunization developed so that we can go out into the world and you have that now in, in your system so that you're not affected by this no more, as to a point. And they're saying it's like 18 to 24 months or whatever, and I'm like, it doesn't make it like, Lord, if this, like, if you, like, 18 to 24 months potentially in the long run that we could be in a situation like this, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, is that really a reality? But then I was given peace as I pulled into my driveway about it. And part, part of this comes with this song that I'm just going to sing. And the chorus of the song says, there's nothing better than you. You, you came along and put me back together. You, you, you're here. You're doing a work right now. And I know that nothing is impossible for our God to do. And so I go, why, why would I continue to meditate on those, those aspects, right? It's good to be informed on what's happening so we know what's, what's going on in the world. But it's... Why am I continuing to meditate and focus on that all the time when I know that God is bigger than all of that? And, uh, and it, <laughs> this is kind of kiddish, but for those families with kids uh, that may are familiar with the VeggieTales series, I think of the lyric, um, uh, God is bigger than the boogeyman. Um, I remember watching that segment growing up as a kid and, and thinking, especially when you're a kid and you're afraid of a lot of things, right? But, but the song said he's bigger than the boogeyman. And he's bigger than, you know, this boogeyman, in a case. I'll put that in terms that way. Um, so I don't know, like, that's kind of real talk of how what's going on in my head and how I'm feeling about all this. And, and trusting in the Lord and knowing that he's the one that's taking care of all, all of business, right? He's taking care of business. He's doing what he needs to do. Um, and I have faith to know that our Lord is in control of all this. I don't know if it has anybody in the room has had any feelings this past weekend regarding the situation or regarding different updates on things that are going on or what they feel that the Lord is doing in their lives with their families at all. Well, I mean, when you talk about it, I'm like, the projections, 18, 24 months. First thought is, I highly doubt we'll be in a sense of isolation for that length of time. Mm -hmm. When governments and you know, economists and everything else, um, you know, you can't drive the world economy into the ground for two years, number one. I really doubt that. You know, they'll figure out another way for life to go on, even in the midst of a virus getting out there. So, you know, I don't think we need to be thinking that. Yeah. Um, but, number two, you know, I mean, 
course, worst case scenarios, you know, we always go, what's the worst case scenario? And some apocalyptic, you know, but even then, just like you said, God is bigger than that. So, you know, we can be at rest. We can have peace in our souls and our minds, but, but, uh, yeah, it, I have my doubts that it will be that kind of a worst case scenario. Yeah. I just, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And what my thoughts were, you, your question specifically was, you know, your thoughts over the weekend, it's like, to not be absorbed in this all the time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, once a day I'll go and watch the news. Usually before bed I'll take a look at the news, flick on my phone, see what the current thing is, see uh, the national news or whatever. Okay, nothing's really changed. This is still happening. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, it's still, okay, turn it off. Get back to what we're doing. And, um, you know, and that's that. Because otherwise you just, if you live in it uh, 24-7, that's not good for, for your soul. No. And if anyone has kids, it's not good for your kids mm -hmm. to be absorbed in that all the time. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like Jenny and I have learned to, like, I don't check the social media, I don't check anything. Like, I go in once a day on the Alberta Health site just to check, just to get an update, but then I just shut it off. I turn it off and go on about my day. I just, I don't, I can't let it. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure this doesn't end in May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. My family had an interesting conversation as we FaceTimed each other. We talked about, you know, end times. And what was predicted in the Bible that seemed so like God, how would you do all of this? And then this virus comes on the plate, sits us all back in our house with distance from one another, yet thank God for the internet that we've been able to, um, you know, pour out the gospel all over the world. But, you know, you can think about how easy it would be for one world government uh, where the economy would be, right? Like, we'd have to, because right now we're having to go to the government mm. to get money. Most people, you know, with the layoffs, now, everybody's having to depend on the government. So you could see how easy it would be mm. for the one world order to come in, all these things. So I think God has given us glimpses. I don't think it's here. I think glimpses of the possibilities of the scripture coming to light for us to mm. say, you know, man, this could really happen this way. So is he, with those who believe in the gospel, is he mm. bringing revelation to us? Mm. I believe there's going to be, through this, a great awakening. Absolutely. Not the other way around. I think this is bringing us, and I want to sh share on some of that this, this coming weekend, mm -hmm. but I believe there's going to be an awakening because we are being heard and seen uh, all over the place. Mm -hmm. I even have neighbors turn, tuning in. Mm -hmm. I've got people, and we only see it in the feed, right? Like, yeah. we would never know. They're never, they wouldn't probably tell us, but we have all of these things going on. So I think that the thing, we can, like I always say, we can live in fear, we can live in faith, but the faith part of us would say, what an opportunity, yeah. what a blessing, yeah. what a privilege to be able to speak to your neighbor in ways that you would never get the courage of even go across the street and introduce a conversation. So if we look at it in terms of how God always sees things for the good of the gospel, it's always about that. It's always about the, the work of the Son that brought salvation to people. Yeah. And if we look at salvation and go, Lord, you know, if we can only see what heaven sees or what you're doing, I'm sure we would get excited as much as there's times we have fear, yeah. right? We're human. We have those periods. We have those moments where we sit back down and think, man, how long is this going to last? Like, what would God allow? We don't know the answers to that. Yeah. We only, the Bible says, take care of today's business. Because tomorrow you're not going to know what's going to be on your plate. But I take assurance in the fact that salvation has come to us. We are saved no matter what. Hallelujah. We could, you know, if he comes tomorrow, we're ready. Yes. Right? Uh, and so yes. I think you have, the Bible says, set your mind on things above. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and if we can bring ourselves back there, even though our heart at times feels faint, it feels weak, 
but we can bring our mind back mm. to set our mind on yeah. things above, we yeah. start to see again with expectation, yeah. with hope, yeah. with glory, yeah. and then we get excited and we sing the songs again, yeah. mm. right? So that's just my heart yeah. as I've yeah. gone through the weekend thinking about, we yeah. all think about the possibilities, I'm sure, right? right. So, but I, I say this to us as a group of Christian leaders, let's never underestimate what people go through. Mm. And be very caring towards people who are going through it. Yeah. We haven't all been raised the same. Not everybody's been raised in the gospel. My husband was never raised, like he never knew the Lord all. Never went to a church a day in his life growing up. Yeah. Right? So sometimes it's easier for me to see from the testimonies, from the witnesses I've seen through my mother's life. You know what I mean? Uh, so I think people are at different places. Yeah. We've got to be very careful to identify with them in their places of fear and uncertainty or whatever that looks like right yeah it's very compassionate at these times mm-hmm. absolutely yeah yeah amen well we're just going to sing this song and uh or just meditate on it as i sing it know that god is god is bigger and better than anything out there search the
leads into highways You're the only one who can Oh, you turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can so strong this morning. There is absolutely nothing in this world that is better than you. Because you're the creator of the universe. Everything in existence, God, exists because you've created it. And God, for what purpose, for what we're in right now, we don't know yet, but we know that you are moving, that you are working, that you are higher and bigger than all the things going on in the world right now. There's only just, God, if there's only just one who believes God, just one more that, that would just tune into you, Lord, that would just create an army. Because that person will spread to the next person, will spread to the next person, God. And your message will go out across all nations, Lord. You, you part the seas. You raise the dead. You give sight to the blind. You make
make the sick well. God, there's nothing better than you. There is nothing impossible for my God. God, I pray for families around the world. Every family that's gathered. In a time of isolation, God, it, it seemed like there isn't a whole lot to do. There's not a lot going on. But God, you had Noah and his family in isolation for 40 days and 40 nights on a boat. Nothing but animals, nothing to see. But God, I can imagine in those 40 days and 40 nights, they continued to worship you. They continued to think about their God and, and what he did for them, Lord. And the impact he's making in their lives. So I pray that for every family that feels like they're shut in and that they've got nowhere to go. They, they can't see anybody. They can't feel like their world is shut down, God. That they remember, especially for those that are, that are physically alone, God, that they're not alone. For you are with them constantly, every day, God. We dwell in your presence. You don't dwell in ours. We dwell in yours. God, may we remember that each and every day. So God, I speak over this day. I speak over every person in this room, God. That each of us would continue to dwell in your presence. That we would have the faith to know, the continuous faith to know that there is nothing better than you.
Hallelujah, Lord. pray that uh, each of you listening in here just get a sense to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. And for us in this room to know that, I know that's something that we speak each and every day, but as a reminder all the time that God will never, ever abandon us or leave us alone. So enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and may God bless you today.